another Element 3D tutorial. My name is Josh Burns, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I use the 3D object replicator shape and the animation engine to create this synthetic beating heart. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is add element to a solid layer and go right into the scene setup. Now once you're in the scene setup, you want to go into primitives and select the sphere low quality and the sphere HD. And I want to turn Sphere HD into a replicator array and then make both layers group 1 and 2. Then on the Sphere Low, I want to just take the size down to about 10% because we want it to be very small, so save us the trouble of having to scale it once we're outside of the scene setup. Then you go into the first group and under Replicator Shape you choose 3D Object, so now it's going to reference the HD Sphere. The 3D object percentage defaults to 10%, but in this case I want to turn it up to 100% so that the sphere is completely covered with the low quality spheres. So now we can get the basic look of the heart that I made here. You can see now it's starting to take shape and start to look like what I had. So from there, we want to get into sort of a more organic shape. So in this case, what we want to do is actually use the position noise. So if I just turn up the amount here, you can see it starts to ripple and look uh, quite a bit more organic, but uh, we don't want as many ripples as, as what's showing up here. So what you want to do is actually take the scale and turn it down. So the lower it is, the larger the ripples become. So you can see here, we just have to kind of get it to a point where you like the shape. And the easiest way to just cycle through that is to go and play with the evolution. So just dial up the evolution and play around with a bit more. Maybe turn up the amount a bit more as well to get just a bit more of that shape. Okay, so now a good thing to know, um, you see here, this is a, kind of a good heart shape and that might work perfectly, right? So you're like, oh, I'm perfect. I'll just go in and rotate the uh, emitter. It's like, well, that doesn't work because what you're actually rotating is that sphere that's being distorted. You don't have control over the rotation of the, the noise. So it's just moving those particles along that surface, which is a distorted surface because of the noise. So you can't, you can't just use that. So what you have to do is, is keep playing with the uh, noise here until you get a shape that you like. And uh, I found this sort of shape worked pretty good. It's pretty close. Kind of has that heart shape to it. I mean, obviously, if you're making some other type of, of shape, you'd, that's what you'd want to you know, look for. But in this case, it works for me. Uh, you could also make a uh, custom 3D object and bring that in as your uh, emitter. And that, would be, and that would be perfect for the shape that you want. But in this case, I'm using uh, what we have available. So now I have this shape that I like. Copy and paste all the settings into the second group. And I'm also gonna go in and make the second group a different color. And that's just to sort of separate it so I can see what's going on because really right now there's no change in the animation. It's just changing the particles out. And so you wouldn't be able to tell what's happening or where it's happening. So this is just a little technique I use to sort of get my bearings when I'm dealing with objects that aren't actually animated just yet. So you can see here, now if I play with the yaw and the pitch I can get this to the top so the, on this uh, on the synthetic heart what I wanted to do is have the top be sort of stationary because so, it's attached to all the other components with the valves and whatnot and then have the bottom moving so this is how I achieve that and you can see here that's pretty close so the top now is group two and the bottom is group one and then we can just turn that back up so that it's nice and smooth all right so now to get the actual motion of the heart we're going to use the position X, Y. As you can see here, this is kind of what happens uh, when you play around with it. So I'm just going to add in a keyframe and add a couple keyframes in. And then in the center keyframe, just move it down a bit and maybe over a bit as well. This is a good way when you grab this little controller here. That's a great way to sort of get an idea of, of what your motion is going to look like. So you don't want it to be too uh, extreme or else it'll start breaking apart. So you want it to be just a little bit of a subtle movement here. So you can see now that's pretty good. But really um, what I wanted to do is sort of get a cyclical type motion. So a nice cycle. So I just hit enter on the numpad. And what that brings up is the actual Bezier curve of this animation. So yeah, if you have any property selected and you hit enter on the numpad, you'll get into the Bezier curve. Now I can kind of get this into sort of a loop that I like, not just straight up and down because I want to sort of swing out and come back up and around. So that's pretty good. And just add some easing in. And from there, all it is is just adding a loop expression to that uh, animation there. And there's the beating heart. 
and you can see the top is stationary so you can attach whatever you want to there and it's not gonna have any problems or it's gonna be cutting into it or anything like that another thing you think you might be able to do again it's rotation it's not really that great uh, you can play around with it if it's really subtle but if you do even the slightest move sometimes it just wrecks it so I I, I haven't really played around with it enough to know but uh, from what I've I've done, it's it's a mess. So I, I try not to do it. So you're thinking, well, I can make it twist a little bit, um, play around with it a bit if you like, but it's not something that I would I would do too much of. But another thing you can do is actually scale. And so if you want the organ to pump a bit more, not just the motion, but also get a bit larger as it's pumping, you can do that as well and scale it up and down. So and that's the exact same process that we just did with the uh, position X Y. Just go into the scale and uh, scale it up and down. And you can just use the scale shape. Or if you want uh, only one specific uh, axis, you can go into the scale X Y Z. So just add that here. Add in keyframes and scale it up a bit. And if you're happy with that, if you wanted to add that in, have that be part of your animation, just put a loop on that as well. And now all that's left is just getting a texture on. Uh, the model and I think I used uh, the pro shaders plastic this one here it's kind of a cross hatched look but what I did is I actually scaled or turned the repeats the UV repeats down um, just so it's a bit bigger kind of like yeah kind of a blocky module little thing and then you just apply that to both copies of the sphere low so there you have it. that's pretty much all i did for the uh, lower half of the synthetic heart everything else was just done with extruded mask shapes and uh, animated masks so there it is a beating synthetic heart thanks for watching i hope you found this informative if you have any questions or comments leave them down below or send me a message and thank you to those who share like and favorite my videos i do appreciate it if you want to see more videos like this visit my channel and consider subscribing thanks again my name is josh burns i'll talk to you later